Templates are the backbone of my vault. Nearly all of my notes originate on a template, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys what templates are, how they work in Obsidian, and every way that I use them to benefit my workflow. All right, so what are templates and what's the point of them? Just in case you're not aware, templates are essentially a pre-formatted set of parameters that you can apply to your notes at your discretion. Okay, so what's the point of them? The point is to save you time and improve your efficiency, and this one is especially true for me, to stop you from forgetting certain things you might otherwise forget if you didn't have a template. Some examples of templates can be a template for a new note. What are some parameters that you want to include in every single note? Maybe the date you created the note, maybe some input options for something like tags or what the note is related to. Templates are also often used for prompts, especially in journaling. If you keep a daily journal, having a template with all of your daily prompts is obviously very useful. Much like everything in Obsidian, there are no rules and you're only limited by your own imagination and creativity. So how does Obsidian handle templates? Obsidian pulls and applies a template based on what you tell it to use. Obsidian has a dedicated core plugin called template that you can enable and once enabled, all you gotta do is tell it where your templates live. Then whenever you wanna apply a template, you just tell Obsidian to apply the template that you want for the note that you're creating and Obsidian will do it for you. Let's see this in action. Okay, so here we are again at our Mastering Obsidian Vault, and the first thing we need to do is create a template. And a template is just a note, so we're gonna create a new note. And for the sake of this example, let's pretend this is a template for new articles. And then we can do some basic formatting, such as giving it space for a title, and then we can move on to the header and do something like date of publish. Then we can do something like the date that you're typing this note. And then what I think are the most important two, which are tags and related. For the related one, what I mean is other notes in your vault that can relate to this specific piece. So you can link them here via bidirectional link. And the first prompt is what was the most memorable thing about the text and what are the main takeaways? I like this one because it forces me to summarize the whole article in the shortest way that I can. And if I really understood the article, that'll be easy. But if I didn't, this is going to be hard. This next one is, was there something I didn't agree with and why? This next one is probably my favorite because it really gets me thinking. And it is, what question would I ask the author if I could? It's also a nice prompt because it gets me thinking on the fourth one, which is, what am I now interested in because of this article? All right, so now we can leave this as it is, but there's one more thing we should do if you want to really take advantage of the templates uh, plugin inside Obsidian. And that one is replacing the date of note by simply date. And this will make sense in just a second, but we need to have double parentheses and not single. And then we can add one in here called time. And I'll show you exactly what these mean in just a second. So we can now go back to settings and we have to enable the templates plugin inside the core plugin. So we go into core plugin, scroll down till you see templates and make sure this one is switched on. So next step we do is we come over here on the left and we scroll all the way back to inside the templates config files. So the first thing it asks us is template folder location. And what this really means is the location that Obsidian should look for when it's looking for your templates. So we can come over here in new folder and create a templates folder. So now if we come back to the config files and we go into templates and we click on it, we should see templates right away. So these next two parameters are about the two variables, date and time that I was just showing you a minute ago. And all that this is, is your desired format for Obsidian to display you the date and the time format. And for me, these ones are fine. So I'm going to leave them as it is. All right, so we can now close out of this and we can find our new article template and drag and drop it into our new templates folder. So now how do we actually apply a template, right? So let's say we're taking a note on a new article and all you need to do is create a new note and then I'm assuming you'd be naming it something related to the article. So the next thing we do is go into the command palette by pressing command P, type in templates, and because you only have one template, you're probably gonna be inserted automatically. Yep, so now the template that we just typed is now inserted here. And as you can see, it tells us the exact date and time. And there you have it. This is the template that you just created. So then you can type in the title here. So then you can start and fill in the blanks, right? You can fill in the tags related and then write the answers to the prompts that you made for yourself. 
So now every time you want to create a template, you just create a new note, type in a title for the template, usually something like, you know, book template or YouTube video template, and then type in the prompts and the header, just like we did. And then lastly, you drag it into the templates folder. And then every single time you go into templates, you see now it already shows us the new one that we just created. And you can pile them on onto your templates folder. And if you want, you can also put the templates folder inside another folder. You can put it however you want. But then if you do that, you need to come back here into templates and make sure that it knows the exact location of your folder. All right, so now that we know what templates are and how to create them, I'm now gonna show you my most common use cases for my templates. And the first use case for me is for the notes on the books that I read. I read all my books on my Kindle. And like I mentioned on episode two of this series, I use the Kindle Highlights plugin on Obsidian to sync the notes from my Kindle into my Obsidian Vault. But that's just what I highlighted on the book. It's not the actual notes on the book. So when I'm finished with the book, I create a new note and add the template for my book notes. And the template looks something like this. Call it something like new book template. So then my header looks something like this. I have the book publishing date, and this one here is the same as before, just to get the date that I've made this note. And then we have here the Kindle highlights, and this is just a way for me to link where exactly are the highlights for this specific book. And then related are other topics that might be related to the topic of this book. So then I link them here, and it's really nice to then see the end result in the graph view. So then the prompts look something like this, you know, what are the main takeaways of the book in the shortest possible way, although I'm guilty of not always going the shortest possible way. The second prompt, what is something you didn't agree with and why? And then the last one, what, if anything, can I apply it to my own life from this book? Nice and simple, it's all I need, and it works for me. All right, so now let's go over what is definitely my biggest use case in using templates, and that one is journaling. So I journal daily and weekly, and I keep it on my Obsidian Vault. And there's two different ways that you can use your templates for, you know, your header and your prompts or whatever else you want to add there and apply it to your daily and weekly journaling. We first have the manual way, which is exactly what I've been showing you, as in you type out your template and then you store it in your templates folder. And then for this specific use case, you have an automatic way. And the automatic way is actually built into the calendar plugin right here. And that way is to tell the calendar plugin where your daily and weekly templates live. So then you don't have to go to the command palette and apply it manually. All you need to do is click on your week or on the day that you want to write for and the calendar will automatically apply the right templates to your notes. Like many people, I have a template for daily and weekly journaling. I'm not a big fan of monthly journaling. I found that it doesn't really work well for me, but if you'd like to do it, and I totally understand if you would, the process is the exact same way. So when you're all set up and you click a day or a week number, it'll ask you, hey, we know you're writing a new daily note and we don't have this file right here. Would you like to create it? When you hit create, it'll pull the daily note that you showed Obsidian and it'll give it to you right here. And the same would go for the weekly, exact same process. So you see, it tells you here, new weekly note. So it knows what you want to do. So to take full advantage of this, we need to come back here to the settings and I went over this plugin on the episode two of this series and it's called the periodic notes. And uh, some of this is already filled up because I went over in that video. But even if you didn't watch that video, it'll be very easy to understand what's going on because it's the exact same process as the templates config file. So for daily notes, we have here the format and I leave this as is. And in here, daily note template, it's gonna ask you, where are you storing your daily note template? And the only difference between what you put here and what you put on the templates over here is that in here, all you need is a folder, right? But in here, since it's pulling the exact file, you need to tell it the exact file. You can't just say it lives on the templates folder. You have to go templates, daily notes, or whatever you want to call it. And then you decide where you want to store all of your new notes. Because if you do daily journal and actually do it every single day, you're gonna end up with a lot of notes, right? And you wanna have them at least in some sort of folder. So I created a journal folder right here so that every time I create a new note, it gets stored over there. And then the exact same process for the weekly notes. You can see here, it's inside my templates folder and it's named weekly notes. And then where do I want to save it? I want to save it on the weekly journal because I like to have some separation between, between my journal entries that are daily and my journal entries that are weekly. And then if you want, you can add monthly notes and as you see, the exact same process, same as quarterly notes or even yearly notes. So yeah, you can have it in any way that you'd like. So now I'm gonna show you what prompts I have for my daily and weekly templates. 
So we come over here and we add a new daily note template. So this is good because if you don't yet have some prompts for your daily and weekly journals, I'm hoping that you can get some inspiration out of this. I like to keep it really simple and not methodical at all. Sometimes if I have nothing to say, I'll just skip it. And I only have a couple prompts and they're more focused on giving me the liberty to write freely and unconstrained. Unlike my weekly journaling, which you're about to see is completely different. So my daily journaling acts more of a meditation session than anything else. So obviously I have the usual um, header inputs such as date and time. So then I have a title and this title is actually way more important than it may seem. I like to use some keywords that are very descriptive of what happened in that day or week so that when I'm going back in my journal calendar and going sometimes a year or two ago, it really helps to take a quick look at the note and see the title because something might have happened that day that when I read it, I know immediately what day this was. Obviously, if it's just the date, you know, February 6, 2022, if nothing major happened in that day, maybe in a week's time, I don't even remember what happened when I mentioned February 6th, right? So imagine in a couple of years time. So it's very helpful to have a title that will spark something and immediately trigger your reaction to see what happened that day. You know, if something big that day happened, it's obvious that you're gonna put it on a title, such as the day I got surgery or my birthday or my fiance, my girlfriend's birthday, something like that, you know, is obvious, but even something as trivial as the day I had really poor sleep and was really tired all day, or the day that I bought a new piece of camera equipment, for instance, you know, any little thing, because obviously we don't have eventful days every single day. So it helps to have any sort of memory trigger on the title. So I leave the title, obviously, and then all I have is two prompts. This is one of them. And the big one is just what's on my mind, right? Because again, the point of my daily journal is to get me writing as much as I want. So I don't want it to be structured like my weekly journal. And speaking of which, let's now move on to the weekly journal. So this one, like I said, is much more methodical and I don't skip it. I do every single week. In fact, I do it every Sunday. So today is Sunday and I will be doing it tonight. So I have the usual date and time headers. But then in here, I also have a tag section and a related to section. Because these weekly entries at times, you know, are very complex and I might have some information that I like to relate to some other part of my vault. And sometimes I'm talking specifically a lot about something that I want it to be a tag. So even if I don't use the tags and related to on every single weekly entry, I like to have it here because sometimes I do. So then the title and it's the exact same process as my daily journal. I want to keep it um, descriptive of what happened that week. So this first one is very similar to the daily journal. So this next one, what did I accomplish this week? Go over to do list and calendar. So then in here, I actually go and I type in every single task that I did on my to do list and the ones that are on my calendar. So I want to see, you know, exactly what I did and, you know, get a good grasp if it was a successful week or not. And it helps me to see what I could have done better. And it ties in well with my next prompts that you're about to see. So next one, what could I have done better this week? I usually look upon everything and, you know, I look back and reflect on what happened and, you know, try and see if I can come up with something I could have done better. And unfortunately I could, I can always do that. So this next one is what did I set to achieve this week and did I meet my goals? So right about this time, this is when I go to my previous weekly journal and I copy and paste what I wrote down there and I paste right here. So after I paste it, I reflect on what I had set up for this week and you know, did I achieve it, did I not, what could I have done better? And then next one probably goes without saying, which is what do I want to achieve this week? And like I said, what I write down here is gonna get copy and pasted into the next week's template. So then lastly, just a little gratitude, you know, what am I grateful for? So yeah, much more methodical. I don't spend hours on this. Usually 20 to 30 minutes is enough. And yeah, it helps me stay on track of what I'm doing and want to achieve. So yeah. So if this type of thing works for you, you know, definitely recommend uh, getting something like this done and set up for your Obsidian Vault. Before this, I was using day one, which many of you probably know the app and it was paid, it's a paid app. And yeah, no comparison, Obsidian is light years ahead and it's free, so really it's a no-brainer. So then once you've set all that up, you can just come back here and once you press create, everything will get set up for you. The same goes for the weekly note. So another use case for me is my YouTube videos. So yeah, I do also have a template for my YouTube videos. And it's very simple. I know plenty of YouTubers that have 
all these insane um, templates of every single thing they want to go over. And, you know, I don't do a lot of that stuff. Maybe I should, but really my template is just, you know, a title. This is just my, my video title. And then I just have a checklist that just goes over small things that I need to do for each video, such as, you know, add to playlist. So if I make an Obsidian video, I want to add it to my Mastering Obsidian playlist. Next one is insert relevant videos. This just refers to the pop-ups that you guys sometimes see hovering over here when I'm talking about certain videos. And my video description, that's really all that I do. And then I have some prompts for my thumbnail. And lastly, my bullet point script. And this one's just a bullet point of my script so that it helps me know that I went over everything that I wanted to go over in the video. And that's really it. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I try to have a template for every single type of note that I make. And there are loads more that I didn't go into, otherwise this video would be far too long. But some other use cases that I use that I'm not going to go over in this video are from my notes on different YouTube videos. What I mean by this is other people's videos, not my own, that I take notes on. On all of my programming notes, especially on Docker Compose files and many more, I also have a big template for yearly reviews that goes over my health, financials, my relationships and stuff like that. Basically, if it's a type of note that I know I'll be writing more than once, I try and make a template for it. All right, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. There's still lots to cover in this series, so make sure you stay subscribed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.